Whiskey Gaming, and this is my late review of Alan Wake Remastered. I play on the Xbox Series X. It's also available on the Xbox One, PS5, PS4, and PC. Okay, so let's get into the story. You play as Alan Wake, a writer. You and your wife go to Cauldron Lake in order to basically go on a vacation. But your writer's block has been super bad. She got you a typewriter. You get butt hurt and run off. But then the power goes out, she gets kidnapped by a dark and, like, mysterious entity, and you have to try and find her. That is basically Alan Wake's goal, is to try and defeat this dark entity and to find and save his wife. Now, there are two DLCs included in the Remastered Edition, and each of them, story-wise, I really enjoyed. They kind of explore what happens afterwards, which is a little bit of bullshit because once again once upon a time it was locked behind dlc like the true ending of the game was locked behind dlc in the remastered version it's really not a cardinal sin because well they're automatically included that being said i enjoy the story and it really does kind of paint how remedy got from like the max pain games to something like control from a storytelling perspective and it definitely has their storytelling quirks such as narration, because that's kind of what they do. They have this noir vibe in all of their games. So let's get into the audio, and we'll start with the voiceover work, because narration. I think it's good. I think for the most part, there are a few characters where it's not quite as amazing as it could be, but you spend most of the time listening to Alan Wake, and he does a great job. I should say the voice actor does a great job. As for the music, I love the music in this game. I think it has a wonderful soundtrack that really works with the game. And lastly, I think the sound effects are very well done in this game. I did hit a few points where there were missing sound effects and it was noticeable, but overall, I think the sound effects are very good in this game. So let's get into the gameplay mechanics and whatnot, and this is a third-person action shooter. It definitely feels like it's trying to be a survival horror game, but it just never hits that point because, quite frankly, it never got scary, and they throw enough ammo at you and health at you that... You know, it never feels that survival element of the survival horror. But because you are up against a dark entity, that is a very literal thing. All your enemies are coated in this, like, darkness that you have to blast off of them with a flashlight, flashbangs, flares, etc. before you can actually damage them. Then you can shoot them with the few guns that you get. Not a huge variety there. And that phrase also goes along with the gameplay overall. The gameplay loop of explore a little bit, run into enemies rinse repeat and you run into the same type of enemies there's only like three types of enemies you got your big dudes you got your medium dudes you got your light fast dudes every now and then there's a slightly tougher dude who kind of warps around but they're super rare so just overall that gameplay loop gets very repetitive and it is unfortunate because that gets boring and it gets kind of to be a slog to get through an interesting story also, there are a few other gameplay elements that I don't necessarily love. Like, in the first DLC, the way they spawn enemies on you, you're almost always surrounded, and I mean properly surrounded, so you're kind of up shit creek, and you've got to replay it a few times to, like, know where they're coming from so you can deal with who you need to deal with first. And it just got a little frustrating because it's not that style of game, plus the checkpointing in the first DLC is garbage. But it also does the trope of, oh, you start every section, every level with all your gear gone, you gotta get the new better flashlight again, you gotta get your guns back, and that gets a little played out as well. It is unfortunate because while the gameplay is not necessarily bad, it does get repetitive. Let's get into the controls, and I'm gonna say overall I think the controls are good. I think the movement is a little sloppy, not super sloppy, but the aiming as well as the responsiveness, I think those work very well, and I think they do a unique thing with your flashlight being your reticle for aiming. I thought that was kind of a clever way of going about it. Lastly, let's get into the graphics and visuals, and while this does look considerably better as a remaster, it still doesn't look quite as good as you would want it to. And what I mean by that is this was released almost two years after Control was and it looks nowhere near as good. In my mind that's kind of the point of a remaster since the gameplay didn't need much fixing in that it was very functional, the controls were functional, visually it needed an upgrade and they just didn't go far enough with that. While it does look better than Alan Wake on the 360, it doesn't look as good as like an Xbox One game, let alone a Series X or a PS5 game should. Hell, it doesn't even reach the like Xbox One levels that it really should. 
And some of the characters just look a little funky. Specifically, his wife looks just not quite right anytime she's on screen. Whereas Alan Wake does look pretty good. I think they did a good job adding a lot more detail to everything. I think the world that they have built, getting to see it in better graphics is really neat. Although obviously they do a good job though, I will say. I was gonna complain about, you know, everything being uh, dark, but they do a good job with it not being so dark that you can't see anything. There are other games specifically that I played recently where things were a little too dark for their own good. And for a game that's all about being lost in the darkness and trying to find something in the darkness, they did a good job of, you know, representing that darkness without it being too dark to see. As for the enemies, they get, you know, they get a little played out. There's not enough variety there. I think that's something that they could have done with the remaster is add a few more. Just plain and simple to wrap up the graphics and visuals. I think they could have gone further with it. Okay, so let's get into the wrap up. And I've done a lot more complaining than I was really anticipating. Because overall, I did enjoy going back through the experience. Because while the gameplay is repetitive, it's functional. The controls are good enough. This isn't a mind-shattering game, but it's also not like a triple-A price game, so that's not a bad thing. You can pick this up for fairly cheap. So overall, I actually don't have any problems recommending this, especially with the sequel coming out, because I'm definitely going to be checking that out, and how they tied it into Control and how it now plays into the Control universe. I thought that was a really cool idea, and it really does fit very well. So overall, I gotta say, I don't have any complaints replaying this game. I actually had a good time with it, although this is actually my first time playing the remaster. So I'm gonna recommend it at the price. It's not perfect, but it is enjoyable. Okay, so in the comments down below, why don't you tell me, what's your favorite video game about an author? I'm now struggling to think of other video games with authors as the main character. And as always, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please hit that like button. And if you like what I'm doing in general, share and subscribe. Have a good one.